Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking into the steel man argument and explaining why this is the most important method of argumentation in any debate and why we should all be using it. Interesting. When pondering subjects that grapple with big ideas such as philosophy or politics, you often find fierce debates between people where the objective of the debate is to win. Now, in order to win a debate, people often adopt what is called a straw man argument. We have covered this argument before, but for those who are unfamiliar, a straw man is a logical fallacy where one misrepresents their opponent's argument and attempts to argue against the false misrepresented argument they themselves made up, not the original argument their opponent proposed. This is disingenuous and fallacious, and it's a method of debate that no true philosopher should ever use. Yes, I completely agree. So. The steel man argument is the exact opposite of the straw man. Where the purpose of the straw man is to weaken and misrepresent your opponent's argument, the purpose of the steel man is to build up your opponent's argument, make it stronger, make it the best possible, most strongest argument, and then try and argue against it. So with the steel man, you're actually trying to help your opponent in the debate? Yes, exactly. If your opponent gives you an argument, you must think about it. Really think about it. And if there are ways to make the argument better, more efficient, perhaps expressed in a more eloquent way, or to add in more information they may have missed, then this is exactly what you ought to do. We should try our absolute best to help our opponents put forward the best and strongest version of their argument. Only then should we start to debate it and find the logical and philosophical problems. Okay, so what would be some examples of this? Right, let's look at the steel man in action. I don't think morality exists because you can't physically touch or see morality. Oh, so what you're saying is because moral statements are not empirically verifiable, you believe there does not exist objective moral truth. Interesting argument, but here's why I disagree. As you can see, the opponent's argument was put forward in a better, more efficient way. Once this is done, you move on to your disagreement. I see. Here's another example. So, I would argue, God has to exist. Otherwise, how does the universe exist? Right, so essentially, you are claiming that the universe is a contingent thing that came into existence and so needs a first cause, and this cause would need to be a supernatural deity beyond space and time. Good point, but there are some problems. As we can see, the argument was strengthened. It was phrased in a better way, more information was put in, and it was built up to a steel man. Only then was it appropriate to argue against. Yes, this is clear. But looking at it for one's own personal benefit, what use is a steel man argument? Surely it is putting you at a disadvantage in winning a debate. That's a good point and one that needs addressing. Now, the point of philosophy or politics or any type of debate for that matter should not be about winning. It should be about finding the truth. If people stop looking at debates as some sort of contest and rather approach it as two people getting together to discuss and edge ourselves closer to the truth, then things on this planet would be so much better. Right. So, if I enter a debate, not with the objective of winning, but with the objective of finding the truth, then I would want my opponent's argument to be the absolute best argument it could be, and I would expect my opponent to want the same of my argument. Debates should be about helping build up each other's points, learning from each other, and disagreeing only because it is necessary in finding the truth. Both parties should always be the winners of a debate if a truth is found or edged closer to, because ultimately that is why we engage in big ideas. Yes, I understand. But what if someone really feels passionately about a specific argument, be it a philosophical position or a political position or a religious argument? Imagine they really and truly care on a personal and emotional level and they want their position to be true what would actually compel them to use the steel man argument? If you want your position to be true, well respected and adopted by others, then it must fight the toughest battles. 
Using fallacious tactics to win debates does nothing for your argument. There is no honour in defeating a straw man, but there is a lot of honour in defeating a steel man. Hmm, interesting. If you enjoy studying philosophy and you want to help support the channel, then please make sure you check out the Philosophy by Paperback Anthology book set available on Amazon. This is a compilation of a number of our scripts put into three volumes, Philosophy of Religion, Metaphysics and Ethics and Political Philosophy, a great set for an introduction to philosophy and a great study guide. All purchases really help out this channel, links are below. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And who out there will be using the steel man argument from now on? Who out there is the honourable debater? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.